Good evening and welcome to Roundtable. Today we have with us a very well known and respected lawyer, attorney at law, Mr. Asel Gunasekara. So he was also delegate to Thimpu Talks and also former MP. And good evening, Mr. Good Gunasekara. Evening. So do let us know more about yourself. Well, what is that to say? I was educated at St. Thomas's College, Mount Lavinia. Uh, I became an advocate in 1968. I joined the Attorney General Department the following year and resigned five years since, went into private practice, was editor of Davasa for about three years. Thereafter, I was delegate to Thimpu Talks and then a member of parliament. Uh, in a brief essay into <laughs> the world of politics, then I was the founder president of the, of the CLO Rumea, which later <coughs> became the JHU. Then I left that party also before it became the JHU. And uh, now I'm the convener of the Manarima movement. So, Mr. And Gunasekar. in active practice as a lawyer. Yeah, Mr. Gunasekar, so you uh, don't want to sort of become a president's counsel, is it? Or? No, 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 no. I have no, I don't value trinkets and baubles. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, the w w reason for you to leave the Sihal Urumia before it became the JHU? There were certain problems with uh, what I would term certain extremist faction of the party and to who, who to me were something like Taliban. Of course, I may be wrong, but that was my perception. And so I left it and I, you see, I felt that uh, we formed that party to fight for certain ideals like the unitary state, uh, <coughs> equality for all citizens in all parts of the country, no part of the country be recognized as a uh, homeland of any single race to the exclusion of others and so on. So when I couldn't get on with them, there was no purpose in staying there and fighting. It was best to get out and for me to continue the fight in my way and for them to continue the fight in their way. So I got out. So, Mr. Gunasekara, now today is the Independence Day. It's the 62nd Independence Celebration. And uh, usually, like the talk we hear in the town is also that, is it right to celebrate independence because we are after a devastating war? And if you look at the North and East, there are many IDPs there. So, for them, the concept of independence is actually really not independence at all. So, is it right for us to celebrate, sort of celebrate independence is one school of thought. Then why do you restrict that to independence? Then we should not celebrate weddings, birthdays, uh, anniversaries, or anything of that nature. Also, why are we thinking only of the North and the East? How about the Sinhalese people in slums, the Sinhalese people in the dry zone, uh, during a drought especially, the people in marginal, eco marginal economic circumstances? There is, there is widespread suffering in the country, and that is not restricted to the Tamils. And as for those who shed crocodile tears over the IDPs, where were they when Sinhalese were in refugee camps? I have been to such camps from 1984 onwards. And not one of these people who now shout so loudly about the woes of the Tamils in, in IDP camps and so on, can't look at them even. And even those people who are shouting about the Tamil IDPs, when they were given the chance to go there, they didn't go. You found Sambandan going to Vienna on an expenses paid trip for, to attend some conference. He preferred to go to Vienna for that conference rather than to go and see his own people in the IDP camps after shouting so much about them. It's all of us. So now, if you look at it, uh, Mr. Gunasekara, now after the elections, there are people who voted for President Rajapaksha, there are people who voted for Mr. Sarath Fonseca. So the, in that way also people are divided politically. And then if you look at the rural-urban divide and the uh, political and also religious ethnic lines, so how can this sort of newfound independence, especially after the end of the war, how can this situation bring about maximum unity to all parties concerned, that is divided across the board? Well, I would say the divisions are man-made. The divisions have been made by ambitious politicians for their own sake. Now, I, for, ex for example, one of the biggest things about which they talk about in Sri Lanka is the so-called ethnic conflict. Now, I see no ethnic conflict here. Sinhalese, Tamils, Muslims, Burgers and people of all races live in perfect amity when left alone. 
is when these stupid politicians get involved that there is trouble. Now, you take the TNA, the Tamil Congress, the Federal Party and so on, and the, and the TULF. They are politics, entirely politics of race. And Chilvanagam refused to merge with the, uh, so, or, or get into the mainstream of politics. When Mr. DSNAC offered them portfolio, they refused. And they kept on fighting on a, on, on a communal plane. So when there are politicians, they try to mislead the people. So it is, it is politicians for the sake of their own power who create these conflicts, who create ethnic conflicts in particular. But for them, we could have got on. And we do get on, unless they interfere. Now, for example, in the height of the LTT problems, Sinhalese, Muslims, Tamils and Burgers in all parts of the country live together in perfect peace and amity. It is only where there were tigers and where there were these uh, political, I don't know what you call them, uh, ragamuffins in parties like the TNA and TULF who created the divisions and of course the Muslim Congress because their survival politically depends on creating divisions. And this is where I come to another point that is people talk so much about how Obama could become the American president and why we don't have or there is no prospect of a Tamil or a Muslim being Sri Lanka's president. Well, my answer to that is, is there anybody who has won the confidence of the people? There was one Tamil who could, I think, have led the country, Mr. Lakshman Kadrigama. Unfortunately, he was murdered. But apart from him, is there a single Tamil in politics today who can be, uh, who, in whom the people can, can repose trust, the single Tamil, Muslims, Burgers, and all of us? Or any of us? Can anybody put, say, Sambandhan or Suresh Premachandran or Senati Raja forward as president? What nonsense. It is because of their own personal failings that they can't become president. Because they can't win the confidence of the people. Lakshman Kadrigama could. And I think he would have become president if he had contested. He could have. And I certainly speak for myself, for what it's worth, I would have worked for him full time. Because he was one great politician. A great statesman, something we sorely lack today. So, Mr. Gunasekar, like people of the caliber of Mr. Kadir Gama is actually such a rare uh, uh, species, I think, nowadays in politics. Now, as you said, politicians are the ones who crea create the divides, right? And but that is the reality. So, it, it, like we are talking about an ideal situation when we say. If there are no politicians and we are left, if we were left alone, things would be okay because actually we have to deal with the politicians and the political parties. So my question to you, Mr. Gunasekar, is as a politician, because there are politicians and they influence the grassroots and they work on their power-hungry agenda, what should their role be to unite the masses in every possible way? So I'm focusing on their role. That's the role of the politician, is it? Role of the politician because they are the ones who are the... You see, the First. problem in our country, and maybe many other countries, is the politician, by and large, comes forward not to serve the country or to make the country a better place. He comes forward to serve himself, his family, 